about radio. So this is the uh, the taper lock fitting, and uh, I'll just uh, strip that apart. So uh, let's say it's held in place with these uh, Allen bolts. Yeah. So they come out, and um, it's a, it's a very good system. Uh, the taper lock. Um, And then what happens is that you use one of these to actually separate it um, by driving this one in. If all things are being equal, it pushes the two halves apart. That's got it, and uh, that, that comes out, and hopefully you can see that's uh, a taper. Then what we're going to do is lift that taper off. It's got a split in the taper there, so that allows it to close up, and that that should just come off. I'm anticipating I'd need a bit of wood under there. Okay, so that's the key that fits in the shaft there, and that's the taper lock. I say these will all be hardened parts, so they'll be, I don't know, quite a high Rockwell hardness. Um, uh, so if I want to turn those down at all, I'm going to have to anneal them first. Um, I, I've measured the internal diameter of the shaft on the um, uh, on the bottom of the mast, and it's 41 millimeters. Just get my vernier. So, um, yeah, uh, this shaft alone, or, or the outside of that, is uh, is at the at the smallest part is uh, 44 millimeters. Um, so uh, I could either have something welded onto here or simply make something else. Um, I need to, to think about that. Um, I was hoping I could have just uh, turned these gears off and uh, used, uh, uh, used the, the component parts. Um, for what I want I could simply drill through this shaft and, and just put a, a boss uh, that was stepped at 40 millimeters because what I'm going to do with the shaft I'm uh, it's not going to be coupled by any fancy technology it's just going to be like a bayonet fitting it'll just be a couple of slots in the bottom and uh, it'll fit onto something there um, uh, once upon a time I had all of the facilities that I could have made a beautiful engineering job but now it's uh, it's more like a scrappy challenge um, uh, for me uh, working <laughs> with very very limited resources so uh, uh, ingenuity is um, uh, the order of the day um, because I say I simply don't have the facilities down there and if you can see that that's a key way in the in the bottom part there um, and the way I'm going to be using this that would introduce water presumably into the mechanism. So I wonder why on earth they left that open like that. Um, I would have thought something different. So I need to be very much aware of that because I will be using this uh, uh, this worm drive this way up. And uh, the fact that it's um, it, it, you know they're sealed bearings, um, but there's an opening there. So just something I need to be aware of. Now I've got this uh, taper lock uh, device apart. What I'm going to do is just 
compare that. Uh, I know that's 40, um, oh, 41 ID and it's uh, uh, inch and three quarters OD, I think. Is it? But I'll see if I can just pick that up, pop that over there. Not easy to do with one hand. Yeah, that'll go a fair engagement into there. So what I might do is simply uh, grind off, uh, cut the top of this off so that that goes in deeper. Um, I'm only going to grind the outer edge off so that um, the bottom of this pole will fit in there and then the two allen bolts that uh, screw these thing together they'll be in place and um, I'll simply uh, use those two bolts as um, uh, like a bayonet fixing so there'll be a, if you like a little slot or a reservoir that runs all the way around there anyway that's just my one of my initial thoughts um, and then as I say what I'd do is uh, cut two little mouse holes in there which uh, would position with the uh, the bolt that'll be in there and the bolt that'll be in there um, I could even put some different bolts in because um, the thread is going to be a little bit right I think I know where I'm going now guys so uh, here I've got the uh, the keyway and that's what's called the key and what I'm going to do, I've got some little bits of cardboard here, a bit of cornflake packet. I'm going to put that in under one end of the key and I'll take this inner collar, you see the taper on there, and um, what I'm going to do is knock that on, lock it onto the shaft that just a bit of cardboard just tightens it up and then um, by getting this in shot I've got a little uh, G clamp here which is going to go on there and then what's going to happen is I'm going to be able to turn that and then I'm going to set up uh, I'll set this up out, outside and I'll um, I'll have the, the grindstone here and uh, I'll set the grinder going and hopefully turn it and grind um, uh, some of the end off this. I need to get this down to uh, about 40 millimeters outside diameter. So I haven't annealed that because it, it's probably, I don't know, uh, 50 or 60 Rockwell C so it's bound to be very hard. Um, you can always tell hardness. Oh no, that's not. Uh, that's. I was expecting that to have been hardened, but um, that's uh, that's not particularly hard at all. You can always tell hardness with a file. If it, if when you rub on it, it feels like glass, uh, then um, uh, you know you're you're dealing with a hardened part. Very surprised about that. I'd expect these. Yeah, you know, the the teeth. Are, a harder not as hard as I would have expected though so that's surprising um, you, you never want teeth too hard because uh, they'll they'll snap off like carrots so um, uh, that's oh that's a whole nother uh, uh, issue I could talk to you about but I won't so this is the setup I've got so far I've got the uh, little uh, bench grinder G clamped uh, to the handrail of the deck and then um, uh, I've got this probably out of focus. Let me put the other lens on. Um, I've got this set up so that uh, I can uh, turn that. Hopefully, I'm getting uh, that in shot, and I'll grind that um, away. Okay, I've uh, got a block of tufnel down here so I can use that as a guide uh, so as I can just feed the uh, uh, this uh, collar in. 
and you can see it's uh, I haven't tried this yet it's completely untested so we'll, we'll see where we go I guess this could take some time. I ought to put a motor on this. Right, I've just uh, stopped to uh, let this have a little cool down. It's not hot yet, but it's 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 only a toy grinder. Um, it's only a you know a, a DIY thing, so not made for this sort of use. Uh, this was um, uh, about 48 uh, millimeters diameter before I started. Don't want to move it too far out of the uh, away from where it is. A bit difficult to get in there square on. Should have taken that uh, top off. I say I don't want to. Uh... That's it. Get in there. Okay, and that's now uh, just over 44 millimeters. So I've got to take off another two millimeters off the radius there. So uh, um, still a fair old bit of grinding, but uh, hopefully you can see that's uh, that's looking not not bad so I'll, uh, I'll let the grinder cool down and uh, resume from there getting to the final stages now but I thought I'd uh, let you see this as this is uh, seeing it from uh, where I'm working I've just uh, finished this off and uh, put a little beveled edge on there so just held that at, at an angle to do that okay so that's the finished article I just need to get this uh, bit of phrase off here uh, and around the edge that's that's something and nothing um, but I, I think that's that's not too bad for a, a backyard lash off okay so back at the foot of the mast um, that's my uh, turn down collet and it's, uh, it's made in part and that'll go there like that and then when these two bolts these uh, little grub screws that uh, Alan screws are in uh, they pull the collet tight onto the 25mm uh, motor shaft um, but they'll be sticking up so what I'll do is I'll cut two mouse holes in the bottom of this pole and that'll form the, the bane it fit in that stops it uh, twisting anyway um, I think that's as far as I'm going on this video um, hope that hasn't been too boring for you um, uh, thanks for watching guys bye bye